Hey everyone, I'm Enrico from John B. Anthony Company. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you my quick start guide to the Allen & Heath DLive consoles. I'm gonna be doing this today on the DLive Director software paired with a DM48, but you can just as easily follow along on one of the surfaces with your mix rack instead, or even if you're using Director in offline mode. If you need to know how to pair your Director software with one of the mix racks. I've covered that previously in a video. You can jump to that with the link down below in the description. Jumping in, the first thing we wanna do is set up all of our outputs. To do that, let's head over to mix rack. Here, you're gonna go to configuration, then mixer configuration. And you can see on the sides, I have groups, effects, auxes, matrices, paffle, and my main outputs. So you can adjust these to as many mono or stereo configurations as you need. For our main, you can see here that I have left, right, left, right, mono, sum, left, right, mono, LCR, and 5.1 surround. The main output can also be put on one fader or split out across two if you'd like. And for the total number of all your mixes and effects, you do have your mixes remaining and effects remaining listed out for you over here, and you can see them adjust up and down as I change them. Once you have this configured, make sure you hit apply when you're done. This is one of the two instances on the DLive where there will be a short dropout in audio, and I'll cover the second in just a moment. So make sure that you're not configuring this screen when you are going live during a performance. Heading over to the next tab, input stereos. This is where I can make any of my adjacent inputs into a stereo source. This will have them show up on one channel and one fader so you can manipulate both equally and keep them as a stereo source. And it's gonna be a lot quicker for you. So here I have three and four set up for stereo. These are gonna be my drum overheads. Once you have this all configured, head over to your IO screen. Here I have my outputs, my inputs, my tie lines, and my virtual sound check. On my outputs, I can choose between my mix rack outputs and my surface outputs. And today I'm just working with a mix rack and a Dante card. I have my local outputs, some DX slots, an ME output, and three IO ports. I do have a Dante card in IO port one for today's setup. And for my local outputs, I want to go and set up all of my auxes. So here I have my mix output with my groups, my auxes, my main outputs, and then two matrices that I also configured. You can patch these however you want. If you're using a surface, you have to hit the patch button first and you can use the rotary encoder to select a bunch of consecutive channels. You can set this up however you want. Over on the left, you can see all my channels are labeled already. All you have to do is click on that particular channel or touch it if you're on the surface, type in the name and color code it. You can use the arrows to quickly move through all of these as well. So configure all of your outputs, label them as you need, whether that's across a local output or one of our other options. And then you're gonna head over to the inputs and you're gonna pretty much do the same thing for your inputs. I'm running the mix rack again today and on IO port one, I have my Dante card. I'm coming in on Dante for all of these channels and I have them patched in, same way we would do our outputs. You can see here my overheads are configured for a left right stereo setup and you can just as easily pull them from the surface as you need. This is gonna be the same situation where over here on our left, we can click and name our channel and color code it as well. Use the arrows to quickly toggle through stuff. After you set up all of your IO, you can head over to surface. Here we have control and then strip assign to configure the layout of all of our faders. So I have three banks of faders and I have six layers for each of my banks. All you have to do is take one of your inputs, an effect, a mix, a monitor, DCA, or MIDI, and simply drag it down into the slot that you want. And you can mix and match these as much as you want. So you don't need to necessarily have one that's all inputs. This is totally customizable across the three banks and across all six layers for those banks. If you wanna move a little quicker and you've got some adjacent stuff, you can take block select, click your start, click your end, and then drag down. You're going to just repeat this until you get up to 
all six layers filled up and all three banks, however you want. Again, totally customizable. So once we have that set up, we're ready to actually go and configure some of our channels. You can see over here, I have my layer A pulled up and I'm going to click the select button so that I can start processing my kick channel. If I head over to processing now on the touch screen, you'll see that bank get pulled up as an overview, but we do have a channel overview, which is the next tab right here. This is just a preview of everything that you're gonna see on our next few tabs. So preamp is going to give us our input, just an alternate for our IO section. And because I'm running in Dante, I don't have the mic preamp game, but that would be right here if that was available and I was using one of the mix rack sockets. I have my polarity and I have my digital trim. Next up, I have filters. These are just simple high and low pass filters to help you clean up your mix. You can use the touch screen or you can adjust them to with the rotary knob. And you do have some different filter options for your slopes. Once you get those going, you can head over to gate. Here, you can see our usual controls for a gate. We have a ballistics meter showing us exactly what it's being gated. You can bypass that. You see it's actually running in the background still. So the D Live is kind of always stuck in fifth gear. You really don't need to worry about adding another deep plugin or a rack effect and choking down the board. You'll actually see that when we get to the compressor section as well. You do also have a sidechain source option, so if you want to gate off a different channel or anything else, you do have that ability, as well as a filter option. This is useful for something like a rack tom. Maybe you have a bunch of cymbal bleed coming through. You want to get that high-end information coming off the cymbal out of what's going to be triggering that particular gate. Next up, I have my insert A. If you're using a Wave Sound Grid server, this is a very important tab. This is where you're gonna go out to your different deep effects, your different rack effects, or maybe you have a piece of hardware or a digital processor like a Wave Sound Grid that you want to connect to. So if you do use a Wave Sound Grid in particular, you wanna make sure that you run out every single channel and bring back in every single channel, even if you're not processing it on the Sound Grid server. This will help keep everything in sync and clocked correctly. The Wave Sound Grid server can have some issues where you bring stuff back in and it's not necessarily in sync. I'll show you how to fix that. So let's pretend I have a Wave Sound Grid card plugged into port two. Select my send, select the proper socket, and then select my return and again, proper socket. Make sure to hit apply when you're done. And from there, let's head over to our four band parametric EQ. Here you can adjust your frequency, your Q, and your boost or cut, whether it's up here with the touchscreen or down here using the rotary encoders. You'll notice that our high and low pass filters from the other screens are shown here as well, and you can actually tweak them for that matter. The two outer four bands do have the ability to be a pass filter or a shelf if you would like as well. Next up, I have my compressor section. Here we have all of our usual compressor settings and again, another ballistics meter. You can turn the compression on. Another thing where it's just always running and stuck in fifth gear. If you do have some of the deep plugins, you can use the library to recall those if you do have them. And again, we have a sidechain source so we can compress off of another source or we can filter out that option as well. Another cool feature for the DLive is that we actually can do parallel compression. So you just turn this path on and you blend back in your dry signal, however you want. Next up, I have insert B. This is the exact same functionality as insert A. Same, same exact options, it's just after your parametric EQ and your compression. From there, we have delay. This is where you can resync any channels that may have become out of sync from your sound grid server, or maybe you have two mics on a source like a snare top and snare bottom and they're out of phase. You can use this to line them back up. After you have that set up for all the channels that you're working with, you're gonna head over to the effects section. And here you can see that I've got 16 effects going, and I'm only gonna set up a few. But 
Here we have this reverb, and I'm going to switch over to my front panel. This is where you actually adjust the parameters for the particular effect that you're working with. And some of them actually give you what's called an expert mode, and you can just simply toggle that on to get a few more options if you really want to fine tune stuff. If you just want to get going quickly and you want some presets, you can click library, and there's a ton of options. I mean, this is just the amount of reverbs that you get, and here are some of the other categories for reverb that we have and you'll notice down here too that i do have my deep effects so once you configure that particular effects channel you're going to head over to the back panel and you're going to configure how it's going to interact with those channels whether that's an insert or mix return is up to you you can do it as an insert for a particular channel or if you want to use them across a bunch of channels you want to do the mix return so set that up and again you want to hit apply when you're done. So now that we've set up our channels, we've set up our effects, let's head over to our routing menu. Here, I am now working with my kick channel still, still selected. This is my kick routing. So up top, I have my main output, I have my matrices, I have my effects, my auxes, my stereo auxes, which does include my in-ear monitors. So this is where I can go and quickly dial in a send for everybody so that they all have they're in your monitors. If you have a stream feed that's separate from your main output, this is where you're going to set up the output for that as well. You can see on the right, I've got my DCAs and I've got my mute groups. You can also change the output source where in the channel strip that it's going to pull from and send to each of your outputs. You're going to go and configure that for all of your channels now. Once you have your routing set up for everything, we're going to head over to ganging. Here, you can see that we have 16 gangs, and you can put any input or any of your mixes into this gang. Click the members that you want, and then here you can see the attributes that we can link together. Get that all set up, and then hit apply once you're done. And you can repeat this for however many up to 16 gangs that you want. Once that's done, let's head to scenes. Here, we can save a scene where maybe we have one band coming in and then another band, so we maybe have our input list changing or just anything like that, and we want to get a second mix going quickly. We can click one of the empty slots. You can type in a name, hit apply, and then hit store. If you have one that's saved already, you can click that, and then over on recall, you can just hit go. Now, if you do want to save the entire mixer configuration show file, you can go to utility, memory, and then show manager. Here, I have my local setups for my mix rack, and I have the ones that are saved to USB sticks over on here. You have the option of plugging in a USB stick to one of the surfaces, or if you're running a director software and you're hooked up to a computer, you can do a local folder. On my mix rack, I want to take one of these. I can copy it to USB. I can take a USB file and copy it over to my DLive. Here is how we store and recall a show. If you are using the director software and you want to pull it from a folder, you would go over to System and then select the folder that you want to pull from. I like to use something like Dropbox just so you know you have it backed up in the cloud and have that fail safe in the event that something goes down. This is pretty much everything you need to know for the bare minimum to get going and mixing a show ASAP. There's obviously a lot more that the DLives can do and I've barely touched the surface. I'm going to be covering this stuff in future videos if you want to get more in depth. If you have any questions on what you've seen, you can leave a comment down below. Happy to help out. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to JBA University and hit the notification bell so you find out when we put out more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.